What's your middle name? What's your middle name? Leon? Shoot him. He's an American spy. Look, they're gonna try to break you, okay? By trying to get you agitated. You have to know your resume back to front. You really believe your little story is gonna make a difference when there's a gun to our heads? I think my story is the only thing between you and a gun to your head. I am here in Hancock Park in Los Angeles. One of these houses back here stood in for the Canadian ambassador's mansion in Tehran in Argo. Nothing is what it seems in Hollywood, and that's especially true of Argo. It got seven Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, but Ben Affleck, the director, producer, and star, didn't get the nod as Best Director. Uh, uh, then he went on to win big at the Golden Globes. Thank you very much, thank you. Uh, we talked to Ben a little while ago about the movie, his career path, and why he doesn't worry too much about what people think. You know, I'm really glad to be where I am with Argo. I'm thrilled. I love the movie. I think about that more than I think about my own little, you know, PR journey. What kind of leaps do you feel like you made with this film as a director? For me, this was a huge step forward. I mean, I had done two movies in Boston. I love those two movies, but... You know, they were very contained in scope as compared to this. The idea of doing a drama, doing a drama in the Middle East, doing a period drama, people sort of wrote it off. But I was excited about that. I didn't want to just keep doing movies in Boston. I thought I would end up just being, you know, that guy. And I'd never, never be able to do anything south of Providence or something. Yes. You guys did such a good right. job capturing a, a, the, the 70s. Was there any part of the 70s that you were eager to leave behind? It was tough because I didn't want to be doing Shaft, you know, and everyone's got fur collars and bell bottoms and canes and, you know, huge Lincolns. That's um, a porn version of your movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had some polyester shirts, which we were shooting in the summers in Burbank. It was like 112. The thing didn't breathe. It was just, you would get drenched. There's a 70s smell that people don't really talk about. Oh my lord. You studied Middle Eastern studies in, in college, but you didn't graduate. No, I'm, are we going to point out all my <laughs> shortcomings on this? Did you ever wish you did graduate? You know, I was in school. I had a creative writing class. I turned in about 75 pages of Goodwill Hunting. And she said it wasn't an accepted literary form. And uh, I left college that day. I thought, this is a waste of my money and time. This is what I want to be doing. Aliens and robots? Yes, sir. You're telling me that there is a movie company in Hollywood right now that is funded by the CIA? One of the things that yes, you sir. got access to in this movie was the CIA. It was unprecedented access. And it 100%, had, 110% had to do with Tony Mendez. We got to film there. I mean, the first movie, and I don't know how long they got to shoot, not only outside the CA, but inside the CA in the lobby. Tony's an Exville special. He got a lot of the Shaw's people out after the fall. So, Tony, tell me, what made you think that Ben was a suitable candidate to tell this story about your life? Suitable? Is there anybody that called him suitable? Tony wanted Will Smith <laughs> to play this character. No, he's, it turns out he's a man of substance, you know? not just a pretty, another pretty face. The only way out of that city is the airport. Ben's attention to detail was really refreshing. One of the interesting things about playing a guy like this, I found this very sort of withdrawn, kind of opaque guy, and I sort of panicked. I thought, this guy you know, has nothing to play. And then I realized you know, it would be really interesting to sort of subvert the traditional uh, protagonist conventions and play somebody who gives nothing away. Looking back on this movie at this particular feat, does it seem like one of the coolest things that you did, or is it just was it just another day at the office? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I want to do just one more with no no talking. When you look at the arc of your career, would you prefer to be known as a director or an actor or a sort of person who wears a lot of hats? I don't spend too much time worrying about how I want to be seen because I was seen and I was nobody auditioning, and then I was seen as this sort of young emerging talent, writer, Oscar winner, and then I was seen as this blockbuster actor, and then I was seen as this kind of train wreck actor, and then I was seen as this um, resurgent director, and now I think I'm kind of seen as just sort of somebody in Hollywood who works and does various different things. I need you to help me make a fake movie. So you want to come to Hollywood and act like a big shot without actually doing anything? Yeah. You'll fit right in.